Jason. Hello. Intro, uh, I don't think we've ever met before, so which I know, is bizarre, I know, isn't yeah. It? I've obviously seen Ed on the trade show floors, but uh, yeah. It's, uh, Sadly, uh, Ed, Ed now works for uh, uh, Schneider's, so yep, uh, there yep. we go. <laughs> so, um, everybody's been saying I should come and check this out. Cool, so that's great to hear. Uh, so this the, the clamshell, right? Yeah, this is the uh, the mollusk, as we're calling it. <laughs> this is the the, the seashell. Um, seashell. So this is our, our first uh, our first uh, flurry into a non eurorack uh, form factor. So yeah, this is our the, the best way I've been trying to describe it is this is our first fully self contained desktop semi modular synthesizer. Which uh, right. the size doesn't uh, do it justice, I think. But uh, we've gone with something that's uh, a hybrid workflow that. There are kind of at least about three different uh, like contexts and workflows that I've sort of been experimenting with the use case of it in. Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll start with the, the top level. If I hold all four buttons here, this kind of does uh, an init, which, which kind of gives us the most like fundamental voice, where I've got a MIDI keyboard connected in, and uh, so there's TRS MIDI on the back, uh, although I'm actually using the computer keyboard because I'm better at using a keyboard as a keyboard than okay. a keyboard as a keyboard. <laughs> um, uh, too much time on a laptop. So, Big skill. Yeah, yeah. So this is just receiving MIDI in, so it's a uh, analog signal path, uh, two analog oscillators, analog wave folder, analog filter, uh, playable monosynth. Uh, so this is the TRS MIDI on the back. Uh, MIDI notes are triggering the envelope, which is generating an analog envelope here, which is normaled to the CV input over the filter and the wave folder. So it's very immediate in a top level format. It's like a complex oscillator. Yeah. Exactly, it's a complex oscillator in the box. So it's it's very much based on the CSL uh, module, which uh, and still has the sort of the classic Instro look. Which yeah, is, yeah. I, I struggle I to do anything. Like there's a sort of uh, Ronnie McIntosh kind of vibe <laughs> to it a little bit. The black and gold, and the the, the font is there's a cool. Thing. I'll, I'll take it. It's uh, it's it's by mistake if that's the case, but uh, yeah, I think I struggle to do anything that's not a black and gold design now. But um, yeah, so this has been a twofold development. So uh, I did the, the hardware, the analog circuitry, and it's actually expanded in control interface in the virtual domain. So this is currently connected over USB-C cable to a laptop, and this is the Seashell's VST plugin interface running inside Ableton. Ah. So the Seashell itself, it's class compliant audio and MIDI. So it functions, at the moment we're func it's functioning as a sound card. So I've got audio coming into a track and then bussing back out over the, the main output. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the, the, the plugin, you can you can define your direct monitoring, monitor mix. So you can uh, you know, bring that over to be monitoring everything from the system or just live monitoring the, the Seashell itself. And is it mono in, mono out or stereo? In uh, stereo. stereo Stereo uh, from the from the seashell, so uh, there's no audio to the seashell itself. Oh, right, so okay. it's a, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, sound yeah. source, yeah, yeah. Um, although the mono going back in, it's a stereo codec to, to get in and out from gotcha. the yeah the system. Um, so yeah, it's a mono synth, but we do have the ability to spread this out into a more musical. So there's some width and. Yeah, is so that effects it's built in, or is that uh, yeah, so we're we're kind of we 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 try to steer away from the multi effects sort of banner because like it's very focused. It's kind of following my approach to a monophonic voice signal path in the modular domain. So a lot of the times I'll use all pass filtering to kind of give a bit of stereo enhancement and a bit of run through some 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 basic processing to create a bit of ambience. So we try to like just build that in. So if you're adding the seashell into a into a production, into a workflow, it's got that first level of polish that it will just sit in, yeah, sit nice. in the context a bit more immediately. Um, and so what we're hearing with this in Net Voice is the top voice going through its wave folder, so it's sine wave through a wave folder, and then the bottom oscillator is the pulse, uh, pulse modulation voice, and they're running in in unison at the moment. If I centre all the pitch pots on the hardware, that's going to align everything to middle C, so it's very immediate and, and quick to right. to tune. Um, but yeah, like within within the DAW environment, it's we've really gone for it fitting into a music production workflow. So you can you treat the VST as you would any other software right. yeah, soft synth, and, and it also makes it programmable. I guess exactly. So yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, like for people that are maybe more used to working in the box. Uh, this is a way to introduce a bit of analog circuitry into the workflow without having to build up a full rig and yeah. patch with it. Yeah, so gateway it's drug, as they say. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it's it's very expandable in in 
a lot of different contexts. So this is this is kind of so far very top level where I can select through different waveforms. So the, the two oscillators, you can, you can choose either the wave folder of the top voice or the sawtooth going to the filter yeah. or the pulse of the bottom, sawtooth from the bottom. Uh, the source button on the hardware itself will cycle through these. I can cycle through the hard sync ratios. Yeah. I can toggle different envelope states. So everything, I think apart from one element we don't have a, a hardware button for yet is being able to choose the sawtooth wave going into the wave folder, which right. is a bit of a bit of an edge case, but it's a, it's a pretty interesting voice in itself. Uh, let me pull that up. Yeah, because some waves don't fold very well. Do yeah, they? yeah. So square waves, unless you're all pass filtering, you're not going to get much much going on. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it gets it gets quite quite interesting. Um, I'll do one more in net here, and I'll show you the expanded semi-modular element of the whole thing. So on the plugin, which uh, at the moment is running as VST, but there's a standalone version as well, um, cross-platform. If I hit the extend button here, oh, this hello. adds in an extra LFO and a 4x4 matrix mixer, which oh, sweet. gives you full patchability, essentially. So you can bring MIDI in, you can get access to velocity, pressure, um, all the CCs. I if, the if, if that's if that's unplugged and you've uh, and the state is set, does it record? This, does it remember? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this is just a virtual front end for this. The entire matrix system is running. The engine's running on the hardware. So uh, the way that it's working at the moment, uh, if I normal my analog parameters, because that's the thing, they're kind of like the digital control parameters, and then the level above you can access FM into the analog oscillators directly, oh, modulate nice. the filter directly, so you've got this analog access point that's akin to, to working with a, a modular. But if I bring those down, center my FM, then I've got total recall over all the parameters, so it means that I can work in the software domain like I would a soft synth. And let's go with... It's a very cheesy trumpet sound. Uh, yeah, we're scrambling to like put in a, a so good yes, range of different presets as we go. But some of the presets have come out greatly. Like we've got a little folder of generative ones where uh, some of our beta testers were going ham and making some really beautiful ones. So this is a nice little generative D major 7 arpeggio set, but the range of... The range of timbres it can get is... is we're still we're still learning it. What's the, what's the filter? Um, uh, it's, a, it's a weird one. So the first hardware iteration that I developed, I made the mistake of putting a Vactrol in it and going with a low pass gate and then learning we can't distribute Vactrols because they contain cadmium. So I had to go with the whole redesign. I mean, it's a very current efficient circuit, but uh, I had to go back to the drawing board. I laid out a, a pretty vanilla Salon Key VCF design right. and then passed it over to Noe, who's out of the tent at the moment, but he's a Instro's in-house filter expert. Um, and uh, yeah, he came up with a topology that I That's a job title, isn't it? Yeah. I'm, I'm an in-house filter expert. <laughs> yeah, nice. I do the oscillators, no, it does the filters. <laughs> and, uh, but it was, it's, uh, the circuit is bizarre. I th you know, it doesn't look like it should work, but he's managed to just recreate the sort of character of this really gentle, like, uh, Vactrol filter, nice. which uh, was great. So it's uh, uh, very happy with it. Um, so, yeah, it's a first of a resonant low-pass filter that's uh, built in. Um, so this is um, shipping soon, right? Uh, it launched on the fifth. So okay. Yeah, so yeah, this we managed to get right, the first well, production well, run out last week before before packing up to come. And what what are you uh, what are you selling it for? Uh, Six four nine pounds. Right. Uh, whatever that translates to cross currency. Yeah. Lovely design. I really like the, the knobs much. and the uh, collars you use. Cheers. And the gold, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> black and gold. Very nice. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.